Today I visit with Rendell Warner, stuntman, actor, songwriter, singer, the real enchilada, you might say, that I've been promising you folks for a long time, Rendell Warner. I'm Rick J, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Rick J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome once again to Spotlight on the Arts. I would ask you to please join me in welcoming Randall Warner, who comes to us as the real deal back from the 70s, TV, actor, stuntman, uh, now singer songwriter, an extended version of his younger days. So I finally have found the opportunity to really interview someone that goes back way back and will be able to answer a lot of your questions for those people who are interested in getting into acting, um, singing, songwriting, what have you. So please. Join me in welcoming Randall Warner. Welcome, Randall. Thank you, Rick J. Thank you. And it's a, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to be here. Uh, wow, I, we go way back. Yes, we way do. <laughs> way back to the Tucson, KIKX kicking in the country, Kim Radio. Uh, that was called Kick Up the Bear when I worked there, if you recall. <laughs> so, if, if you wanted your music to play, it was go see Rick J, right? And, that's uh, right. Uh, I think if I remember, you might have been one of those that called me. Mo Bandy, when he came out with Rodeo Clown, would pester yeah. me. I had to play that about four times on my shift. <laughs> so, I, But I was always uh, ready to do it. You know, and that, that, uh, that goes to a long list. So we can really uh, relate back to a lot of things. Uh, I, I think uh, time rolls along. We're going to look at probably the viewers. We're going to look at a two-part series here on the Randall Warner story. So um, we're going to like get to know Randall a little bit more. Uh, I like to refer to Randall to my friends as uh, the only stunt man who's broken more bones than Evil Knievel, if you can believe that. Now, Randy can tell you all about that as a stunt man when we get into that uh, portion. But he has so much to share. So here's another Renaissance man that uh, can take you back some years. So Let's go way back. You know, I've got a picture of you when you're in your baseball uniform. Can you let the viewers worldwide know where you was born, how you was raised, where you was raised, anything you'd want to share family uh, on down the line. Let us hear a little bit about getting to know Randall Warner, the real deal. Yes. Okay. Where do we begin? Yes. Um, and I've been asked this many times, by the way, and asked to interview on this. Uh, and uh, a lot of things have been kept private. Of course, we keep some things private for our yes. mm -hmm. family protection reasons. And uh, Definitely. But anyway, um, I had decided, because I do know you for many years, I decided to give exclusive to you, full, honest, open, everything. Any questions that are asked, I will answer them, good, bad, or ugly. And uh, so, anyway, I was born in uh, 1958 in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh -huh. I spent uh, most of my summers, all my summers, uh, on a ranch being raised. So, you know. Um, Horses. 
horses and, and, and guns back then for us, you know, uh, even though I was sent to NRA safety course and all, but at a young age, you had a gun. Yes. You went out and, you know, and uh, hunted rabbit or whatever and uh, back sure. then. And uh, anyway, point being, I learned all that coming up. And uh, I know as a ch small child, I, I, I did a, a couple takes for a cereal commercial, which went nowhere, but I had got smitten at that time. Uh huh. And then That's... watching, uh, at that time, it was Rifleman on TV. And I, oh, yes. Yeah. And I knew, uh, I, I thought, you know, this guy, uh, this guy is filming right here in Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. um it's real you know to me as a child and that's what i'm gonna do. and i and I, i'll tell you a story i i would run to my dad and i say dad dad all i want to do is be on tv i just want to be on tv and oh, him see. being the, the, the humor he had uh, he picked me up and set me on top of the tv and he said <laughs> now you're on tv like oh, definitely humor there. Well, I watched The Rifleman two episodes every Sunday afternoon. Johnny Crawford. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I can't. I, love, I still watch it. I'm I'm still hooked on the show, even though I probably know all the dialogue, right? But yes. <laughs> then I, uh, I, my dad took me actually to the uh, old Tucson movie set as a child. Uh -huh. while they were filming that and uh, and now i know i'm hooked right now i know this is what i'm going to do uh, yes i think uh, i realized that when i was younger i could sing and maybe please people or uh, act in a school play you know it kind of got spit in there and they all started coming back at me or to me as years progressed. Well, now let's see, we, we don't want to miss anything. What else in your past would you like to um, well, talk about you know, before we go into? I'm just going to say, you know, like in high school, um, I, I'm just getting ready to go into my junior year. And uh, I already had enough credits. I only had to go one more semester and I, would, I had oh. my Three years are done. I'm, I'm graduating because I, I was doing, uh, I was running the photo lab, everything. And uh, uh -huh. so anyway, long story short with that, at that time, there was a series that came out, a trucking series, movie series, uh, TV series I called see. Moving On. Moving On with Clock. Okay. And, and they've come, they came to Phoenix and... Uh, just happened my my friend's dad was working there uh as a mechanic for them and he, uh, he got me out on the set got me hooked up me and my 57 chevy truck your 57 got, chevy truck that's right uh-huh yeah we both got paid a hundred dollars a day so now i'm on the movie set and i but i got high school but i'm almost graduated anyway so i you know i don't really need to go the extra and, and and then also, you know, I was looking at Army, you know, Army, because I had that in my head. And awesome. uh, so anyway, I went home and told my dad, I said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm quitting school. I'm going to oh. be traveling with the moving on set. And oh, they've asked yeah. me to come along. And and uh, I think, I think he knocked me out. I don't remember. <laughs> We just wake up re remembering the the uh, memories, huh? I guess, what you had left. Oh, yes. Yeah. So basically, that was your first gig, you might say, as far as a movie. Yes. And uh, moving on. I, I wish I had those to share today. We have, I have clips of that stuff. It's kind of funny to look back. But, um, but yeah, that was it. And then uh, things went on from there, of course. Uh, you know, and I, uh, I did go in the army and, uh, yes, <laughs> airborne ranger, airborne ranger. I was first uh, you know, in Fort Ord, Fort Ord, California. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. And then, uh, by the way, 
I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with, with your military. Well, thank you, thank you. I uh, it, 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 you basically live with the every day, you know. Uh, uh, although it, it did teach me when you survive that you can do just about anything you want to try to do and you put your mind to it. Um, uh, I want to thank you. I can't talk a lot about that, but definitely it was Army Security Agency Intelligence, the S2 office. So I'm working for Mr. Cotton. I wrote an article for Reader's Digest about um, that incident. But so um, that's, that's to come to the future. I think there's a story there, maybe a book, what have you. I've been approached a few times, but well, thank you. Thank you for your service. We both. I, I, I think I think we will see a movie on this one day. I do. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> That's my prediction. We'll see if it comes true, but I'm sure it will. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That sounds great. Well, let's see now. Um, do you want to? Can you share with us uh, uh, family? Was there any family of that? Um, uh, I know we both have had little talks about those loves of our, of our lives, you know. Uh, so I don't like to talk too much about them, but uh, Amanda definitely has a few loves in his life. <laughs> when you're young, when you're young and you're running hard and fast and, and you're chasing everything, right? As you know, yes. when, uh, and, and you're just motivated. And, and, you know, I mean, I drove two hours sometimes in the middle of the night to get to a movie set every day and, and yes. always away, always away. And uh, so I'm not a good, uh, I'm not a good husband. I was a bad husband that way. Uh, I hear but, you. Um, you. You had your passion and yeah. you basically followed your passion in the sense. You've got to follow no matter what, because if you don't, uh, you know, you have to face it anyway. You have to follow it. So uh, in that time, yeah, so I have, uh, <laughs> I've been married three times. I see. Uh -huh. And, and the, the third wasn't a charm. Oh, that's so, it. Would you like to say her, uh, hello, hello to that? I, I would like to say hello to all my family, actually. And, okay, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have six children and nine grandchildren. So. Oh. Yeah. My. And I, I love them all, and, and uh, they're my life. And uh, and uh, I just want to say uh, I want to say hello to uh, also my studio partner friend who has helped me so much out here in San Diego. Also, uh, Destiny Rose. Destiny. Destiny Rose, who has the her Hawaiian tune. Uh, Coming uh, home, Hawaii. Yes. Yes, uh, that I enjoy. Uh, listening which, to which I'm uh yeah I'm I'm producer you know and uh all for for all of that and promoting that which will be coming out later uh Excellent. Oh, my, I, my story my story is a rags to riches to rags to we're gonna see how it turns out yes well I think we'll all have our ups and downs you might say uh so that uh I think everyone can understand that Without going into a lot of detail, you you had a, a great setup recently, and in a, a a van, I guess you could call it, which uh, caught on fire in the middle of San Diego. <laughs> so that's a good example. Yeah, you can Google that, and I tell everybody Google it because it's kind of an unbelievable story, but it happened, and. Let me just touch base into that real quick. Uh, I had, yes, a, a fully restored motor home that was also my recording studio. Yes. Uh, I had amps, guitars, computers, everything you could think of and need, fully stocked, ready, and ready to go on tour at the time. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I heard a click driving down uh, and... Uh, in uh, Chula Vista, California, on Broadway Road, Main Road. I yes. heard a click, click in the motor, and then I heard a boom. Wow. Huh. And flames, 
flames just started coming out, right? Now I can't get my seat belt off, right? And I, it, uh -huh. so I finally get that off. There is a door on there, a, a door for the driver. It will not open. My. So I get up in between the two seats. There's a cowling over the engine, and you have a, a seat on each side. And it's kind of strange, but I, I stood between them, which seemed like 20 minutes. I'm sure it was a couple seconds, but the flames came up all over, like, you know. And so I'm like, yeah, I got to get out of here, right? Or stay yes. here or get out of here. And I, I had to bust out through there. I'm rolling on the, I roll to the ground, busting out, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> The flames have caught a palm tree on fire. The canopy of a taco shop. Uh -huh. I remember a guy yelling. He goes, you know, is there anyone in there? And I'm like, no. And, and it, at first they think I'm shooting a movie, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I see people at the taco shop. They, uh, they, were, uh, they were grabbing their... They were grabbing their plate of tacos and running. Uh, you know? They made sure they held on to the tacos. Huh? I, thought, I thought about that later. Like, you know, you see flames coming, you see the canopy yes. on fire. Be a great like, commercial. <laughs> <laughs> great tacos, right? right. So, uh, anyway, so with that done, uh, the fire department, of course, came right away. Now, here's the strange thing about this, and you can take it for what it is, and this can be looked up again on Google. It was, the address is 666 Broadway. Oh, my. <laughs> and Six here I am, here I am, you know, promoting Cowboy Heaven. Yes, Cowboy, Cowboy Heaven, a uh, release. Uh -huh. Now, that had to be on Taco Tuesday, all that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Well, well you know, people they say I'm a they say I'm a known there now, and that uh, and people come to see the burnt tree. The tree is still alive. It, it's a giant, giant palm tree. Oh, wow! Uh, and it's still alive, but it's 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 black, and I feel bad about the tree. I see. Yeah. Well, Randall, it's about time to take that first break. Uh, so uh, before that break, we'd like to hear the song. Uh, can you intro the song um, Cowboy Heaven? We'll run that now, before going to break. Take us to break with, if you can. Tell us about how that originated and, and uh, how it be, it's available, I understand. I've got a copy. I keep it handy because uh, I get to run it every... Uh, couple yes. days <laughs> hey duplicates yeah yeah exactly but I, I i did yeah i sent you a copy uh as everybody does with their music they always look after with jay but, uh, so tell us a story about this and and send us to uh, a break we'll we'll run this copy and and uh take it from there so what's the story behind cowboy heaven well, Cowboy Heaven is, uh, it's about faith and, uh, and, and, and a father telling his son, don't you worry, everything's going to be okay. I'll be waiting for you. Um, this came about at a time when actually I was going through, I was, I, I at the time I was told I was dying and, uh, oh, I see. and, and was facing that. And my son, uh, me and my son basically, uh, we just came up with Cowboy Heaven as, well, all my songs and words are always given to me, you know, by God. But um, mm -hmm. uh, they come to me, whether it's in the middle of the night in visions or dreams, or it's not like I sit down and say, okay, I got to write that, which I can do. I can write you a jingle in 24 hours of anything, but exactly. these are the ones that come to you. And so it's about, a father talking to his son and saying, Hey, okay, stay, stay strong. Stay strong. There's no, there's no pain in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. All right, we'll go to that selection and we'll meet back with you 
after listening to Cowboy Heaven by Randall Warner. Well, he said, son. I'll be waiting up in the sky Says there's a place called Cowboy Hill Place where angels fly Oh, it's past the stars Creative, connection, control. Support the arts and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on fan for me. Dot com. Green Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. Welcome back, everyone, to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Rick J, your host, and. Today, we're visiting with well-known Randall Warner, stuntman, uh, songwriter, singer, actor, 
And uh, so we're going to turn to, to Randall once again. Uh, by the way, that was a great selection. I love that song. Uh, I've played at least three or four times a week, Randall. So I'd like to then, uh, as you talk to the viewers out there worldwide on our new platforms, let's go ahead and talk about your acting career. We know how it sort of started, but it extended on uh, the movies you've been in, the association. Um, and uh, then as a stamp man, however you, whatever role it took. I know you um, one time was in the hospital for two years, I understand, healing up. So I think you probably could, could talk yeah. about your acting career as an actor, stunt man, and what all that takes into consideration, both sides, the good and the bad, of Hollywood, film, what have you. I know we all seem to have to find something else to do between gigs. So you know, I'm sure that the viewers are anxious about uh, what you find to do uh, even now or even then, what you did between jobs. Be probably like me, you swung a hammer at one time. You probably moved a little concrete at one time. <laughs> so go ahead and I'll just let you run with it. Randall Warner, sort of his life story uh, on the screen and uh, what, what have you <laughs> yeah i don't know where, where you start with that but you you uh yes i've done uh so many different trades to survive you know uh well even singing is a, is a survival because like the bird the bird the bird sings to survive yes <laughs> but you if you're going to be an actor uh, a singer, songwriter, you know, any of this, uh, you, yeah, what can I say? You really better be driven in the passion for it, and you better have other trades to back up. I don't care, even if you're doing great at one year, uh, bringing in those residuals. Uh, yes. The next year might be slow, right? Yeah, and dry. <laughs> So you have to really be driven and you have to really be uh, uh, anything. You have to have other trades. I've done, uh, I was a painting contractor, not like the painting you do, the great art. But I was a, uh, I painted, you know, uh, was uh, Northern contracting with Flagstaff, Arizona. I did a lot of uh, historical spots, re, uh, redoing them all and. uh, and, and then I got out of that. I, I would get bored with a trade, so I would go into something else. Uh-huh. And uh, but I've done. Uh, I, I was an auto mechanic. Uh, I had my own automotive shop in uh, in the early eighties. For I years, see. I uh, from there uh, with my dad, we ran a feed store for fifteen years uh-huh. with with a U-Haul center, and. Uh, uh, so that was in southeastern Arizona, and we uh, so um, that was a great thing for me, which not everybody has, because I could say, Dad, I've got a I've, I've got a casting call tomorrow. That's it. Uh, that's it for part one of the Randall Warner uh, story. I'm Rick J saying, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you.